Museum curator Satomi Fujimura explains that the artworks have their origins in traditional paintings, but they also explore future styles and directions that become possible as the use of technology in art evolves. Hiroshu Senju's A Forest of Water appears like a traditional Japanese folding screen. Julian Opie's minimalist figures, the woman with evening dress and Kira with a pendant, smile at the viewer. Shiyuki Kojima's Rhythmic Calm, Land of Sand, expresses the constant shifting of the dunes in the wind. One room of the gallery is pitch black and the LCD screens appear to emerge from the darkness, showing small scenes of moving life. The Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Photography has always included film in its range of interests, but this LCD exhibition is a new development. It represents a fusion of the moving image and the more traditional framed art hanging on the wall. The space tourism race marked a milestone recently as British entrepreneur Sir Richard Branson and American aerospace designer Bert Rattan waved to a crowd from inside the cabin of a new aircraft designed to carry a passenger spaceship to launch altitude. The White Knight II mothership was christened with champagne before a crowd of engineers, dignitaries and space enthusiasts at the Mojave Air and Spaceport in the high desert north of Los Angeles. That's my second accident. We hope to be able to start a program where we can um, try to fly people incredibly quickly around the world, um, you know, from you know, New York to Australia in less than two hours. White Knight 2 is the largest all-carbon composite aircraft ever built. It is the brainchild of Bert Rattan, who made history in 2004 when his Spaceship One became the first private manned aircraft to reach space. That historic space flight was accomplished with the help of White Knight 2's smaller predecessor, White Knight. Now the new mothership must undergo at least a year of rigorous flight tests. Retired American astronaut Buzz Aldrin and his wife also took part in the event. Well, I mean, the, the publicity benefit would accrue to whom? To me? No. I, I've been on the moon with Neil Armstrong, see? So I don't need the publicity. Next step is the completion of Spaceship Two, which will be flown by two pilots and carry six passengers. Meanwhile, in the established space launch business, Belgian astronaut Frank DeWine is preparing for six months at the Columbus Laboratory on the International Space Station. He will fly with Russian cosmonaut Roman Romanenko and Canadian Space Agency astronaut Robert Thirsk. With the Columbus Laboratory finally functioning, Europe now has a very real long-term investment in the ISS. DeWine will be doing maintenance on the robotic arm and installing Japanese equipment bought up by the HTV cargo module, which is due to dock with the ISS soon after he arrives. As well, he will be carrying out experiments for scientists back on Earth. What scientists are trying to determine is if microgravity influences our perceptions of parallel lines. Orientation is something that is very important uh, also here on Earth, how people can orient themselves. Often all elderly people have problems with that and by trying to measure the processes also in microgravity that are happening in our brain, scientists try to determine if they can find uh, also cures for diseases here on Earth. In 2002, DeWine spent 12 days in space aboard the ISS for ESA and Belgium's Odyssea mission. The European Space Agency is not taking any chances with its next astronaut, and Dutch ESA astronaut Andre Kuipers is serving as backup. In support of the upcoming mission, NASA has already sent up a shuttle carrying supplies and equipment.
America's Midwest, billions of tons of corn, once used as food, are now being used to produce ethanol. From this year, controversial federal mandates require the United States to use 34 billion litres of alternative fuel annually. That makes grain a high in-demand product. For those involved in the production chain for biofuels, it means more profit. A full 33% of this year's US corn harvest, or 3.9 billion bushels, is expected to go towards ethanol production, up from 22%. Virtually all experts agree that using crops for biofuel drives up the price of grain, but opinions vary greatly as to how much. The world's poorest people are suffering because of the biofuels initiative. Many can no longer afford the most basic food staples, and there are calls for strong measures to pull the current world food situation out of what some are describing as a crisis situation. <laughs> Estimates cited by the International Food Policy Research Institute say biofuels account for more than 30% of the food price increases. What is certain is that many people across the developing world are feeling the pinch. White House economic advisers say the ethanol industry accounts for just 2 to 3 per cent of the recent jump in grain prices, which are up more than 40 per cent since 2007. Despite the controversy, most governments are keen to hit their biofuel targets. But even if every bit of corn in the US was used to produce ethanol, American demand for fuel would still not be met. In the Netherlands, a different plant is being tested as a renewable fuel. Algae could be part of the answer to the world's energy crisis. In Western Holland, a shallow pool that is rapidly turning green with algae is being harvested for animal feed, skin preparations, biodegradable plastics and biofuel. Algae is the slimy stuff that clouds your home aquarium and, in larger form, gets tangled in your feet in a lake or ocean. It can grow almost anywhere there is water and sunlight and, under the right conditions, it can double its volume within hours. Opinions differ on how best to grow algae and how quickly it could come on stream as a commercially viable alternative or supplement to fossil fuel. But scientists and industrialists agree the potential is huge. In a warehouse 200 kilometres southeast of Amsterdam, a bioreactor is producing algae in pressure cooker fashion that its manufacturer hopes will one day power jet aircraft. Algae doesn't require much space or good farmland. It can grow in freshwater, polluted water, seawater or farm runoff. It can purify a city's sewage while feeding on the nitrogen and phosphates in human waste. And it is rich in oil. The most common strains farmed today have an oil content of 30%, but this can rise as high as 70%. Experts say it will be years, maybe a decade, before this simplest of all plants can be efficiently processed for fuel. But when that day comes, it could go a long way toward easing the world's energy needs and responding to global warming. And it avoids the fuel for food dilemma that has plagued first and second generation biofuels like corn, sugar and palm oil. The European Union has mandated that 20% of Europe's energy must come from renewable sources by 2020, including a 10% biofuel component for transportation fuel. One promising technique nurtures the algae in a closed and controlled environment of clear tubes, speeding the reproductive process by two to four times. But the process requires much more energy than open pools and needs a tube cleaning system to maintain a high light penetration for photosynthesis. At Ingrapro's farm, the scum from the double Olympic sized pool is filtered and processed into flaky green strips that crumble to the touch. Potential for the new product is huge.